For a kid growing up in the 90s, there were two picture books that weren't quite like the rest. Dark, textured and satirical, they were the antithesis of other children's books at the time. And both of those books happened to be illustrated by Lane Smith. To get the inside scoop on the artist who crafted the stinky cheese man, I called Connecticut-based Smith from my home in South Australia. I was a janitor at Disneyland and I loved it. The good thing about being what they call a custodial host, you have a lot of free time on your hands because the, the park kept itself clean because it was, you know, the happiest place on earth. I would just walk around with a pan and broom, you know, picking up little cigarette butts and popcorn bits. I had a lot of time to think and you're in this crazy environment and it's inspiring. And so even then I, I was coming up with children's book ideas and that was before I graduated college. I had an instructor who sort of pulled me aside and said, you're pretty good at this. You, you could probably do this for a living. So that was sort of a revelation and no one in my uh, family had ever gone to college or anything. And he said, well, there are these things called art schools where they just teach art. And I, I said, how do I go about it? And he, he said, oh, I'll drive you. And he drove me about an hour away and he got me an appointment with the counselor. And they said, yeah, you know, your work is green, but we could see some talent there. So build up your portfolio and apply. And I built up this portfolio and I got accepted at this somewhat prestigious art school. And it was really due to Mr. Poffman, my high school art teacher. You know, when I was in art school, I was the worst student. I was a hardworking student, but that, that school, people came there to learn how to do photorealistic painting, you know, and they went into advertising. And so it was kind of an odd school for me because you put your stuff up on the crit rail in class and, you know, there'd be a beautiful painting, a beautiful painting, a beautiful painting, and then a pointed dog with sandpaper textures and paint dripping off and they go, oh, is this guy? And so I graduated from college after four years, moved to New York, and this was the golden age of magazines. So I just worked freelance on basically every magazine there was. Time, Sports Illustrated, Newsweek, my girlfriend, now my wife, was working at yet another magazine, but she was working with another woman there in the art department, and that woman was married to John Sheska. And she said, you know, my husband is a school teacher, but he wants to get into kids' books and he keeps getting rejected everywhere. Maybe Lane could meet him and he could illustrate for John. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to do that. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> but I met John and he was hilarious. He showed me all these little stories he was working on. And I sold the true story, The Three Little Pigs, uh, after it had been rejected by everybody. Finally, someone took a chance on it and it kind of became this runaway bestseller. They wanted to follow up with something and they asked, what else do you have? And we had previously shown them all these various stinky cheese man stories and they, they, they weren't too thrilled with them. They thought they were kind of weird and they were, you know, they were weird. They looked weird. They, they read weird, but we said, oh, we, we still have those stories and we, we tweaked them or we changed them and we made them better, which we didn't but they, they accepted them, they published them, and my wife Molly designed them, and she was sort of the person who put them all together and made it all make sense. The collaboration between Smith and his wife, designer Molly Leach, is as successful as it is unique. I'll do the illustration first, or even a rough illustration, and then she'll start thinking about type design and say, how about this? And then she'll hand it back to me and I'll adjust my illustration sometimes. I might make the character a little smaller or a little larger, which, you know, back in the time of the stinky cheese man was difficult because that was pre-computer. She was working with an X-Acto knife and frisket and cutting out every little word by hand. And John and I would come up with something like, uh, it would be great if stinky cheese man was, uh, so it'll stinky on this page, the type kind of melts off the side, but she would have to cut out every little thing and, and glue it down, send it off to a printer, get it back. So we've been working now for over 30 years and it's still the same, but we're both on computers now, so it's much easier. She was very lucky because at the time we were doing Stinky Cheese Man, the art director went on leave. I think she went on maternity leave and so they were without an art director. And 
you know, John just kind of jumped in and said, well, you know, Lane's married to Molly. She could design Stinky Cheese Man. And they were kind of like, oh, okay. With the success of the Stinky Cheese Man, Hollywood code. John and I were working on a Stinky Cheese Man movie 30 years ago. We were producers on it. I was directing it. I had just come off of working on James and the Giant Peach, and that was all stop motion puppets. And, you know, Tim Burton produced it and Henry Selleck directed it. So we were trying to do Stinky Cheese Man, but it was an uphill battle and it eventually just died after a year. It's a little premature to tell, but John and I have been working with Netflix for about a year on a Stinky Cheese Man TV series. Uh, we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens, but that would be great. And it's a chance to work with John again, and, you know, we'll, we speak every week, and so that's, it's kind of like old times, it's fun. But movies weren't the only authors rolling in. I did a book, the last book Dr. Seuss wrote, you know, he had died, and they found this manuscript, as they often do, but it was a pretty good one. I got to work out, you know, with the Seuss estate, that was cool, and then I had such a good experience with the doll family that they asked me to re-illustrate the original James the Giant Peach novel. I'll get a call to design a film or a series or something, and it sounds great, but I'm not, I know I'm not going to enjoy it as much as a book, where it's almost like you're making a movie when you do a book because you write the script, you art direct it, you're working, you're married to the designer. For young artists looking to make it in children's books, Smith has some simple advice. Now, and it's probably harder than ever now, people breaking into the business because so many people are doing children's books. When we started, it wasn't that crowded a field, but now everybody's doing The advice I have, which is just the hackney cliche of not to give up, only because when we did the true story of the Three Little Pigs, that was rejected soundly by nearly every publisher. It doesn't look that wild now or read that crazily, but it was just so unusual at the time. Even though everyone was rejecting it, after a while, you would think that would get to you, but we still know it was a good book and no one was gonna stop us and you just kind of hang in there. And then eventually someone took a chance on it. And I think if you're, if you have just even a little talent, if you believe in yourself, hang in there. Cause eventually someone's gonna, someone's gonna publish you, probably. <laughs> Maybe not, but. <laughs> it's been a great career and a great life. I have three books I'm working on now. Hopefully I'll keep doing books on 90 and then like William Steig and then I'll kick the bucket. That would be great. <laughs>